Well, folks, it's time for the final Festival of Legends card review. We got 22 cards in this one, so I'm going to try to go a little bit faster, uh, except for this card, because it's a new legendary we got to talk a lot about. It's Rhythm and Roots, the new four-mana legendary spell for Druid. It's Nature, and it's Choose One Secretly. This is a callback to a mechanic, I think, from uh, Frozen Throne with Fate Spinner. And uh, the two choices here that are secret, so your opponent won't get to see the result until it happens, uh, is summon three 5-5 five, five Ancients in two turns or 8-8 eight, eight Giants in four turns. So uh, in either case, basically getting really big boards here for four mana. That's at least 15-15 in stats for four mana. Four mana, 7-7, seven, seven, eat your heart out here with Rhythm and Roots. Uh, but of course, coming on a little bit of a delay. So if you're willing to sacrifice four mana now, you can get this significant payoff later and i think there are some great follow-ups and synergies we've already seen the timber tambourine that kind of does the same thing set up to play some ancients and dump the board with ancients later but then also we've got drum circle that seven mana spell that gives plus two plus four uh to your board so you can kind of preemptively load this up to summon a bunch of ancients and then dump that two four buff on them as well and i think it gives them taunt so that could build a really nice big defensive wall now, um, in regards to the 8-8 Giants, I just don't see a lot of scenarios where you're ever picking the 8-8 Giants. Like, I think four turns is just too long to wait for the payoff. Druid does have a lot of armor gain and survivability, but is the extra, like, 3-3 three, three in stats on each, each minion really going to be worth the extra two turns? Would you rather just have a pretty good board uh, sooner as opposed to a slightly better board later, because, you know, stats diminish in value over the course of the game. That extra 3-3 three, three, two turns later might just get more easily swept up. You know, there's the twisting nether style effects later in the game, the big board removals, the soul stealers, etc. That that might more easily answer that later, even with bigger stats. So, number one, I feel like 95% of the time or more, people are always going to pick the Ancients with this card. And then number two, the fact that it's a secret choice, it doesn't really feel that impactful to me on this card. With Fate Spinner back in the day, the two choices were like a board-based AoE that would like deal three to the board, if I recall. And then alternatively, it was a board-based buffed for the Druid player. So if they plop down a Fate Spinner, you kind of had to decide like, am I gonna kill this now and wipe out my own board? Or if I don't kill it now, they're gonna trade it in and maybe buff their board. So there was this real friction about oh, the secret outcome actually matters a lot with my decision points. Because I have to make a choice right now based on this card, and the result is a, is a big difference, a significant difference sometimes with how the game shakes out. With Rhythm and Roots, the opponent doesn't really decide anything or change their behavior necessarily based on the secret. They just say to themselves, okay, I'm going to need some answer to these five fives. I'm going to I'm gonna need to kill them before this all comes down. I expect them to pick the five fives most of the time, but even if they don't, it's like, okay, well, I've just got two more turns to find the exact same answer I was going to be looking for anyway. So uh, it's it's less about creating decision points for the opponent with the secret and more about just creating a timeline, I guess, like the only surprise or interesting factor about the secret is just how long it takes for this stuff to come down. So I don't know, in, in a weird way, it feels like a slightly less elegant way to use the secretly effect, but maybe this is teasing, we'll get like secretly cards more in the future or something they're not afraid to go back to because I do think it's a pretty cool mechanic. I just don't know that this card captures it perhaps in the exact best ways. Um, that said, I still think this card is interesting for Druid. This is kind of like ramp in a weird way. <laughs> Normally Druids would ramp for mana and then use that mana to make big stuff. This is kind of like ramping for minions instead because you're sacrificing your mana now in order to make a bigger, more efficient board later. I hope that comparison makes sense. So it's like board-based ramped and ramp instead of mana-based ramp, which is kind of an interesting angle um, to take the class. So I I'm, I'm intrigued. I think this card's fine, frankly. Uh, maybe just in, uh, some questions about the design, perhaps. So next up for Druid here, we've got the Harmonic Mood. Uh, it's Harmonic and Dissonance spell, two mana. Give your hero plus two attack this turn and gain four armor. Or uh, for the Dissonant Mood, which looks super awesome on artwork, by the way, give your hero plus four attack and gain two armor. And uh, as we know with like Zok Fog now at the Legendary for Druid, they've got some attack and armor gain synergy. So this could be a way to juice up your Zok. Uh, either in combination with, although mana makes that a little hard sometimes, perhaps with your hero power, or just on its own, if you don't have your hero power juiced up through all the hero power effects, this could be a way to cheese a little extra into your Zok Fog Snout. 
uh, which is nice, but also just on its own as well. Um, just, you know, pretty efficient attack output here for, for damage for, for two mana with a little bit of, of armor gain upside on the back end is nice as well. Or if you need that survivability instead, gaining four for two is not bad. If you get to it, maybe chip through a minion or something with that plus two attack. So this could be complimentary with that attack hero power synergies we've seen from the hero power development in Druid so far. I don't think this card's like crazy high output or crazy efficient or anything, but I think it looks like a solid building block and option for that kind of deck. Moving on to Shaman here, we've got the Chill Vibes, a three mana frost spell. This one's gonna restore eight health, and if you hit it with Finale, it's gonna summon you a three three elemental with taunt and uh back in my day with healing touch for druid we used to have to pay three mana just to get eight health but in this case we also get a nice little three three elemental as a bonus and yeah i think this is is absolutely fine if you're getting really rushed down with minions and a three three feels good on board you know maybe you play this on three and you only heal a point of health or two but you're just happy to get that three three taunt and then later in the game, the health matters more. It's certainly fine to get uh, a bonus 3-3 three, three taunt sometimes, but you're just really happy to restore 8, perhaps, if your opponent has has really pushed uh, a ton of damage. So I think in both cases, this card probably feels good, has that flexibility across the game. Looks like a solid option. So next up here, we have Melomania, a new 0-mana spell. Each time you play a minion this turn, add a random Shaman spell to your hand. So this is actually just like the old Hagatha Hero Power for the Hagatha Hero card. That was just a passive on your Hero Power. This time it's uh, bundled into a 0-mana spell and would allow you to convert, uh, you know, some cheap minions basically here into some more resources in hand. I do have a little bit of a question there from like a deck fit standpoint, you know, uh, for instance, like an aggro deck who might have a lot of small minions you could weave into a single turn. Um, are they going to care about random spells? Number one, like, you know, it's a mix of stuff. You're going to get some defensive cards, some slow cards, things that don't necessarily contribute to your aggro game plan all that well, because it's such a random assortment of, of, of different things that support different game plans. Uh, but then if you like shift over to control decks instead, like you might have a little bit more stuff in hand to play with this. Number one, their cards are probably going to be a little bit more expensive. So you get fewer things in return. Are they actually running enough minions? Uh, is it mostly just like spells and reactive cards in hand? And are the minions really conditional effects and things that aren't just great to kind of spam out on board? So in other words, which scenarios feel really, really good to run Melomania? And then even if for an aggro deck that has a bunch of cheap minions, are they keeping them in hand? No, they're like playing them out, right? They're trying to get them down fast. So they're not like saving stuff up for a big Melomania turn. So I don't know, man. I just feel like this card, although, you know, it looks like it has a great output, clearly zero mana to make a bunch of stuff could be cool when i think about it in an actual contextual setting where i have to say hey what, what where's the turn this is being played where's the deck that this is being played that actually leaves me with a lot more questions i'm not sure where this fits into a puzzle piece for a deck it feels like the the payoff is too random and the setup is kind of too specific and for some reason that just doesn't really sync up so next up here, we have the saxophone soloist. This poor guy looks so sad. <laughs> He's a one mana, one two Murloc. Battlecry, if you control no other minions, add a saxophone soloist to your hand. So uh, this is a great way to like start a turn, perhaps uh, for a Murloc board. Just plop this down on turn one. It's uh, sort of Firefly-esque, I guess, in its nature, giving you an extra one two body in hand and if your opponent clears it up well guess what you get to go again start another turn with the saxophone soloist so you know it might be kind of a cheap little easy minion to weave into the start of your turns if your opponent keeps chipping through your board which can be great for a, a murloc deck that needs a lot of bodies on boards needs murlocs you know of course you might think there's some synergy here with mellow mania and and the saxophone soloist but only kind of like this might be two cards for the mellow mania you know since the second one doesn't keep looping it's probably fine, but I, again, don't really see that coming together just because you've one bonus minion here basically off the saxophone soloist that doesn't seem worth it. But I do think Murloc uh, decks might value this. You just need those early bodies on board, and this is a way to help fill in the gaps a little bit on curve, help you reload from a from a board clear or a sweep up. So I, uh, I like the saxophone soloist in that regard. Feels pretty efficient there. Moving on over to Warlock here, we've got Demonic Dynamics, a new three mana fell spell. This one will allow you to discover two demons and finale give them plus one, plus two. So uh, this is just a little value generator. To me, it actually feels pretty expensive for what it is, like discovering two random demons. Like you get to pick the one you want, so that's nice. But uh, I don't know, three man attacks on that. Just run cards you wanna play perhaps, you know, run specific game plans. This feels a little too generic and a little too 
a little too random in regards to setting up for a win condition or a dex actual goals so i don't know i don't think that most decks will really need this or value this um probably find some time to like discover this or randomly generate it and you get some cool resources and stuff but uh most decks i suspect won't really run this one and the the small buff by the way just doesn't really feel nearly impactful enough if there was a cost discount or something to help you recover some of this man overhead i'd feel better about it but a small buff to me doesn't really make enough sense dirge of despair this card looks wicked cool from the artwork standpoint six mana shadow spell for warlock deal three damage to a character if that kills it summon a demon from your deck so this has got major bane of doom vibes uh that one would deal two and summon you a random demon now this is a demon from your deck though so you've got this uh cool potential like big warlock line and we saw things like malganus showing up uh in the core set as well so you know you could use this to summon a malganus for instance which i don't know if that's actually good but <laughs> pretty cool there might be some other uh you know big demons big defensive demons etc any any big taunt or big awesome thing you're trying to cheat into play this lets you maybe clean up a small minion and then get that awesome giant demon now that said you know six mana deal three is a little bit of an awkward space for this sometimes it might be kind of hard to line up a uh, three damage that successfully kills something on turn six by then minions can sometimes be a little bit bigger i think there will still be plenty of opportunities a lot of little three threes and stuff floating around in hearthstone these days but in moments where it whiffs that might be just back breaking for a deck that really needs to cheat out something big on time something specific on time so that gives me some real concerns because those kinds of decks often can't afford to wait an extra turn or two to do their big awesome thing or cheat their big awesome taunt into play or whatever because they fall behind too far so you know if this comes down on seven eight nine because the board's just not lining up all that well uh, that makes me concerned yeah you could use this on friendly minions but that feels weird too so i don't know the conditionality here i think is actually going to be uh, more of a roadblock for this card than you might expect otherwise so um cool card fun that it references bane of doom and stuff i think but uh maybe not quite good enough Moving on here for Rogue, we've got the Mixtape, a new one mana spell. This allows you to discover a copy of a card that your opponent played this game. And uh, yeah, this looks pretty cool to me. Like your opponent runs good cards, right? <laughs> they have cards that you like often. They may not always necessarily fit your game plan all that well, but you still expect your opponent to have some good high quality cards, some spell to grab or something that's really nice. Uh, and if you're playing a non-Rogue opponent, of course, that could support things like Thief strategies as well. If you're getting uh class cards that your opponent played hey that's nice throw that in your test that could be a really cool way to fuel a test but i don't think you need that i think this is just a cheap little way to get some additional resources as well and get some cool stuff so uh value generation thief support um just cool cards out of this this card looks really fun and i think halfway decent as well so next up here we have harmonic pop and distant pop for priest six mana holy spell deal three damage to all minions summon a six six pop star or of course flip those numbers and deal six to all minions and summon a three three pop star and honestly i think both of these feel pretty good especially when you consider in many cases with the uh priest legendary spell you might be playing these like on turn four or at the very least four four mana uh and that feels much much better i think sometimes to weave these in but but you may not need it uh just a board clear that summons a six six feels good uh it's not like a defensive six six or anything but if you're cleaning up the board you're just getting some counter tempo and that'll trade into the next things for a control priest so i like that uh and then if you need the the six damage to all to deal with bigger boards it's there sometimes will it always line up perfectly no but i think three damage is a good enough floor that it's still gonna feel good for a majority of turns and then you know a free three three on top of that six damage aoe it's not super exciting but it's a nice bonus you're just happy to clear the board three three feels fine priest of course has lots of different ways to use minions so uh i think these both feel like great cards uh strong output here for uh, another nice priest board clear of which they always seem to be looking for a few of these so next up for paladin here we've got the disco mole a two mana two two weapon death rattle give a random friendly minion plus one plus one and you can play minions while equipped to improve the disco mole so uh this is a pretty cool little weapon uh at a base level you know some some okay stats i don't think this is actually terrible at a base level getting a nice little board buff uh, paladin cares about that and i think you could very reasonably expect to just play one minion at least on curve play this on two hit something play a minion on turn three that bumps up the disco mall by one you attack again hit something hopefully clear something maybe just two to face whatever and you get a nice little plus two plus two buff on your three drop 
that feels awesome and if you're playing an aggro deck with some of these really cheap divine shield minions and stuff you might even play like two maybe even three minions on turn three and then this is just immediately a plus four plus four buff right away on turn three that's kind of great like that feels like a super super high uh, efficiency card here for only two mana so that looks awesome and then also there's some fun stuff you can do with this card where you just save it up for the whole game <laughs> just keep playing minions and never attacking never activating that death rattle clearly you know some, some some weapon removal and stuff could ruin this but then you just play a giant charge minion like you play one charge minion at the end like 10 20 turns later or whatever and then you attack once and you give your charge minion like plus 20 plus 20 because you've played 20 minions that feels more like a meme than than real but i think this card looks very strong from an early game standpoint just putting a lot of stats out pretty quickly without really sacrificing all that much here in regards to the weapon itself like yeah we have one mana two two weapons these days but uh i don't think you're you're feeling too bad if you play this for two and even if you have to save it for a couple turns you know getting three three four four five five and buffs out of this feels pretty reasonable currently based on uh pure paladin game plans all these really cheap divine shield minions and stats of the divine shields feels even better so this card looks really good to me. Moving on, we've got the Harmonic Dissonance spell for Paladin. This is Harmonic Disco, five mana holy spell. It allows you to discover a five cost minion and you can summon it with plus one, plus one, or alternatively, you can discover a one cost minion and summon it with plus five, plus five. And frankly, I have no idea which of these are gonna feel better. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of five cost cards do have um, good, uh, effects on board and stuff you know like you're gonna have stronger effects sometimes for five mana and you're still gonna have some stats to go with it so i think from an effects standpoint harmonic disco is gonna feel a little bit better than dissonant but sometimes you might just care about the bodies and there are some decent uh decent one cost cards out there like if you get a righteous protector or something for your dissonant disco I think you're going to feel pretty happy about that, right? Getting a 6-6 six, six Taunt Divine Shield is probably going to feel okay. That said, uh, is, it, is a deck actually going to need to run this? Like, I could see maybe some big Paladin stuff that needs filler cards that aren't going to mess up, like, whatever big minion pool they're looking to play for. You just kind of need spells. Maybe this fills in there. But otherwise, I don't know. I feel like most decks are just going to rather run five-cost things that they know what they do and have a little bit more consistency and reliability here than the, uh, than the Harmonic Disco option. Next up here is Boogie Down, a new three mana holy spell. Summon two one cost minions from your deck and then finale, give them taunt. So uh, this is a pretty cool little card. It's kind of like drawing two, right? Because you're pulling those cards out of your deck specifically that has the bonus of finding extra stuff and then also thinning your deck as well to make sure that you're hitting higher, higher value plays a little bit later. And the fact that this can give them taunt is a nice little bonus sometimes, you know, just kind of get in the way of your opponent, slow things down. Again, with like small Divine Shield minions, sometimes that could pay off really nicely as well, or maybe some Death Rattles or something you're looking to activate. So this kind of has those like Call to Arms vibes of before, but you know, lower cost total, but still feels like it's a, a, a pretty clean card to me. I think this will feel quite good to play in, in many cases just because so many one cost cards do have upsides. We've even got these like one cost cards now that have like the deal damage to your hero, negate those negative battle cries, get some cool stuff into play. And then sometimes you may not want to give them taunt too. This card gives you some flexibility. If you've already got like a big awesome taunt out and you want to protect your small stuff, you could choose not to finale this sometimes and probably still feel good about it. But you know, ultimately uh, you're only spending kind of one extra mana to get these two one cost cards. You're getting that bonus taunt. You got holy synergy activations. You got deck thinning and sort of pseudo card draw activation out of this. So for three mana, this card feels like it does a lot. Moving over to Mage here, we've got the Cosmic Keyboard, a new two mana instrument for Mage. This one has three durability and after you cast a spell, summon an elemental with stats equal to its cost and then you lose one durability. So uh, this card looks pretty cool to me. Of course, some big spell synergy support. You load this up, then you play some of your big spell stuff, play on an eight mana spell, and you're getting a free bonus 88 out of this for only two mana. That's pretty cool. That might take a while to go online though. So I don't think it's bad if you play a couple early mid game spells with this three four five mana spells are still feeling pretty good maybe for the first couple durability on this so you're getting a payoff in those stats rather quickly and then you can maybe save one or two durability for later uh to get some really big payoffs as well if you're already running a big spell package you're gonna need small stuff like this to weave into your early turns and i think the payoff on this feels pretty significant for such a low cost card 
It does perhaps have some counter synergies with things like Mill House if he's putting cards to low cost. That could kind of mess up your Cosmic Keyboard, but that's not always going to happen. He's just a one-of for a Legendary, so I think that deck's going to need uh, more ways to support itself, and Cosmic Keyboard feels like a pretty strong way to do that. Moving on to Synthesize, a new one-mana spell for Mage. Add a random 1, 2, and 3 cost elemental to your hand. And man, this is a lot of value generation for a single one-cost card. Uh, getting three things in return here, particularly for something so cheap like this, that's really easy to like weave into turns and then you find even more little cheap cards to weave into turns to make sure you're filling your mana effectively. Uh, the elementals right now for mage are kind of a mixed bag. They don't all necessarily line up for the same game plan, but there are still some high powered cards here. I just actually decided to pull it up. Some of these are rotating, keep that in mind, but these are the current uh, mage elementals that cost one, two, and three. So. Uh, actually only this one, this one, and this one will be here. So kind of a mixed bag, but the submerged space rock, for instance, can get you more resources. But then of course, you've also got neutrals as well. When it comes to neutrals, you know, again, some interesting little cards, you know, a little bit of value generation, some, some utility here and there. So I don't think these are bad cards by any means. On average, I think you're going to get some stuff you're kind of okay with having. Now, not every deck's going to need that, right? They don't care about it if they're trying to fill their curve, if they're more aggressive, if they have a clean curve. Synthesize won't help, but would I be totally shocked if a deck threw this in just to get more stuff to do with a little bit of a grindier game plan? Especially, as we always say, in a in a new, new rotation meta, I don't think that's insane for a deck that cares about value to toss this in. It's just really really um it's a it's a lot of a lot of stuff for one mana basically getting three cards in in return feels uh quite good for this one so i i don't know this card's intriguing to me so next up here we have the hollow technician a new three mana three four it reads after any minion takes exactly one damage destroy it and that wording's pretty specific we saw the card uh light show uh previously that was sitting out all those two damage beams uh to, to hit your opponent's cards well they don't want you to kill and stuff with light show and hollow technician so this is capped at exactly one can't be two damage has to be one which is great for the mage's hero power that's that's nice um I don't know if that's actually super exciting play, kind of spending five mana uh, to clear a thing and maybe just leave yourself behind a three, four that also technically makes your board more susceptible. Your opponent's like, oh yeah, okay. I'll also just kill your stuff. Cause this is any minion, of course. It's not just enemy minions. So, um, you know, some of the more exciting options with like a light show kind of go away with this card and you're left with some stuff like spectral trainee or your hero power, but all of those are starting to cost a little bit more mana than I like or require multiple cards for a board clear effectively, which doesn't really sound that interesting. I think you like bigger just cards and, and board clears that work because sometimes otherwise the hollow technician is just kind of sitting there and your hero power is your best option and you don't feel great about that. So, you know, I think this will be a monster in arena for mage. It seems like a crazy good arena card to me, but in standard, I don't know. I think most decks will figure out better ways to clear things and deal with problems. Uh, the hollow technician just has a little bit too much overhead from his mana cost standpoint. Yeah, you're getting a three, four, but it's not really all that exciting. If you're trying to be defensive and clear boards, uh, you'd rather have something that was just cheaper or more efficient from from a card resource standpoint not requiring multiple things to go into uh, a single way to clear stuff so ultimately i think the hollow technician will fall a little bit short in standard but uh man keep an eye out i guess in arena all right so next up moving over to hunter we've got the thorn mantle musician a new one mana one three quill bore with finale the next beast you summon gets uh plus one plus one and yeah that's that's fine by the way this art is so stupidly cute what in the world that cute little hyena or whatever it is up there is so <laughs> freaking cute um but uh yeah this looks this looks fine you know we love we love one threes to start out games and then you know if you're playing this on one which i think you're most often excited to do then um yeah bonus on your two drop that's fine. It's not like a crazy big bonus or anything, but decks that are playing for early aggression that have beasts in their kit are probably going to be fine playing this. Uh, it does get a little weaker, of course, later in the game, as many one drops, of course, do. But I think from a finale standpoint, being one mana makes this pretty easy to weave into turns and make sure that you're still hitting that finale later. So yeah, this looks like a fine card. Moving on to the Harmonica Soloist. This is a new three mana four two. With Battle Cry, if you control no other minions, discover and cast a secret. So 
Uh, yeah, we've we've seen a lot of these cards in this three mana discover a thing slot that have worked pretty well in Hearthstone, and in this case for the Harmonica Soloist, it's just immediately putting the secret into play. And sometimes that's nice for secrets. It's like, okay, yeah, I've got this minion down that helps me with certain secrets. The opponent's going to want to attack into this to play a Freezing Trap, or the opponent's going to... I uh, want to attack in this to proc whatever other thing, right? So having um, this all bundled together can be pretty useful. And the fact that you're discovering secrets sometimes too can really be harder for the opponent sometimes to grasp exactly what you're doing. If it's not a secret in your deck, there's more possibilities for surprise and so on. The stat total on this does make it a little weak at two health, but also it makes it more aggressive. And that's what hunters like to be sometimes. They want to push damage and threats. And especially if the secrets are disruptive enough, this might be a way to just squeeze through an extra four damage to face, which hunters do indeed value. Moving over to Demon Hunter here, we have the Guitar Soloist, a new five mana four three with Battle Cry. If you control no other minions, draw a spell, a minion and a weapon so uh not only a lot of card draw crazy here to get three cards on a body but also it's really specific card draw as well so uh you, you've got basically three distinct tutors here that can really help you find um you know great combinations of things that work well together or just different options you know sometimes when you draw cards it sucks because you get kind of three of the same things and you needed a mix of stuff in this case you know maybe you're going to get something aggressive with a weapon right you know you're going to get a body to play down uh next turn which can be nice uh and you know you're gonna get a spell if you're looking for something like reactive or some life gain or something so i think a lot of decks will construct themselves in creative ways to make sure that this card draw is fulfilling different game plans giving you you know uh different options or sometimes fulfilling very specific game plans and maybe running only one weapon and one minion that somehow synergize in a really cool way right this just gives you a lot of control basically over your card draw the fact that this is a soloist could be limiting for some decks perhaps but if you're ahead on board and you're doing awesome things maybe you don't need to reload as much maybe you just want to push the the game plan but i think decks that care about this are probably going to be playing from behind very often in one way or another and are okay with a soloist having this condition because the output on this one is just so high for drawing three on a body and that's such specific draw that seems really powerful to me Next up for uh, Demon Hunter is the Taste of Chaos, a new fell spell for one mana. Uh, this one allows you to deal two damage to a minion and finale discover a fell spell. And uh, yeah, we've seen some of these one twos uh, with payoff, like, you know, clean up something small and get a, get a bonus. I'm not sure the bonus here is great. Like turning it into a new card is sometimes valuable and certainly demon hunter has some, some useful fell spells but something about this just feels a little low in, in 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 numerical values for demon hunter like i don't know they just have so many great cheap spells that seem to do bigger things to me and turning this into another spell i don't know something about that's just leaving me wanting a little bit um it's fine it just doesn't really jump out to me as anything crazy so next up for Death Knight here, we've got the Hardcore Cultist, a 2-1 Undead for three mana. It's a single Frost Rune card, which is good. We need more single Frost Rune cards that are good for uh, the Rainbow Payoff card, the Necrotic Explosion or whatever. Uh, this one seems pretty good to me, actually. Battlecry, deal two damage, and then Finale, deal that to all enemies. So uh, you basically get yourself a really, really cheap uh damage output card it's a consecration basically uh on the hardcore cultist here attached to a body now consecration used to cost four mana but it's actually gonna cost three mana now in the core set so this is basically a consecration on a stick if you finale it which sometimes on turn three i think that's actually gonna feel totally fine uh just clean up a couple early minions get yourself something down here get a corpse etc uh, that's gonna feel good and then also this card can actually just be face damage late sometimes that's not bad frost in particular is a is a, a rune type that cares a lot about dealing face damage so if you're chipping away their health total early and and keeping a board clear that's awesome and then late sometimes just an extra two and that will definitely make a difference so this card looks uh, pretty good to me next up is the death metal knight a three mana three four undead double blood uh, Death Knight card taunt and costs health instead of mana if your hero was healed this turn so uh, if you are getting some big heals out of your different Death Knight cards of which of course blood has a lot we've also seen some other like healing synergies pop up in uh, this set as well this is a way to help you get some some bodies on board get another little defensive taunt down while healing up so sometimes if you spend all your mana healing you don't get to do much else this kind of says okay look you healed a lot 
In exchange for a little bit of that health, I'm going to give you the chance to do more stuff and play more things and maybe get some more defensive bodies down. That seems fine to me. I, I'm not uh, thinking this feels really good. It's a little counterintuitive that I just healed, so I'm going to spin that health again. But if the deck is using that healing as a more, you know, aggressive plan almost or a board building plan of which some of the other cards we saw previously seem to do the same thing maybe that comes together i don't know that feels awkward to me i think we're still going to see a favor towards really you know defensive really greedy blood death knights and i don't know that you're going to care enough about the death metal knight i guess if the meta is like aggressive enough with board based plays and you just need taunts to really get in the way and taunts are more valuable than like board clears or total health gain that you might be willing to run the death metal knight but i suspect very often this card's gonna fall short and kind of get left out of decks so we got one final card here the final warrior card is this enough to save the class i don't think so this is the koto high drum kit a four minute three two death rattle deal one damage to all minions and then gain armor while equipped Equipped to improve so uh that gaining armor is going to be per instance of armor gained not per amount of armor gained so for instance like one heavy play it's not going to push this to eight damage but a hero power will push it to two not three basically so uh you know you got to gain armor multiple times to really uh to pump these numbers up and unfortunately i think that's kind of expensive to do there are historically some cheap ways for warrior to gain armor but normally we run ones that are you know a little more expensive and have pack bigger punch per card played basically so you know the shield blocks and stuff of the world so spend three mana to, to pump this number up by one doesn't feel that great a hero power to spend two to push this up by one it doesn't really feel that great to me um so you know like when you want this board clear perhaps in the mid game i don't know that you'll have had time to to pump the number up enough now like razorfin rockstar will count independently so you know if you have like a hero power plus a rockstar that pushes this up by two kind of helps but then also this is a symmetrical effect it hurts your own board which you probably don't care about too much if you're a control deck but it's like did it need to why couldn't this just hit the enemy minions you know <laughs> like it didn't need to just hit your own board as well so i don't know i think it's going to be hard to get this number big enough on time i think it's going to take a few turns and and quite a bit of mana to really get this to that exciting point you know even three four three solid four is good five is good you know that's where you start to get i think really excited about this card is it like four or five mana f damage but I, I think it's going to take a lot of work to get there so uh, to me this one looks a little bit slow it's a three two at a base which isn't terrible for four but frankly it could have been a little bigger i think so to me uh this one just looks uh like it's going to take too long to really get going to support a control warrior game plan so uh, no, I certainly don't think this is the card that's going to save Warrior. Rhythm and Roots is a three-star card. Harmonic Mood is a three-star card. Chill Vibes is a three-star card. Melomania is a two-star card. Saxophone Soloist is a four-star card. Demonic Dynamics is a one-star card. Dirge of Despair is a two-star card. Mixtape is a three-star card. Harmonic Pop is a four-star card. Disco Mall is a four-star card. Harmonic Disco is a two-star card. Boogie Down is a four-star card. Cosmic Keyboard is a four-star card. Synthesize is a three-star card. Hollow Technician is a two-star card. Thorn Mantle Musician is a three-star card. Harmonica Soloist is a three-star card. Guitar Soloist is a four-star card. Taste of Chaos is a two-star card. Hardcore Cultist is a four-star card. Death Metal Knight is a two-star card. Kotohai Drum Kit is a two-star card. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for this card review. Let me know what you think about all of these cards down in the comments below. In particular, I'm excited to know which decks you guys are most excited to play. We're going to have some opportunities to play stuff with theory crafting and, and so on. So if you share your most excited decks, uh, I'm going to be poking through the comments looking for the archetypes and things you guys enjoy the most. If you see something else somebody wrote, definitely use that, uh, that like button on those comments there to, to, to spotlight it or whatever so we can all find out the decks that are most interesting to all of you and that's what i'll do my best to play on uh theory crafting and beyond so anyway look forward to that thanks so much for hanging out throughout this review season as always uh thanks so much for watching and until next time game on